Hi there, Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com with another tutorial and this time we're going to be working with X particles in Cinema 4D. I thought this would be cool for those of you that um, would like to simulate soft body dynamics but don't actually own the studio version of Cinema 4D and you believe it or not you can actually use X particles to do this. It's not really designed for soft bodies and cloth um, but it still does a pretty good job. So let's just start by showing the basics. I'm going to come up, add in a plane object I'm also going to add in a sphere. Now let's grab this plane and let's just pull this up above the sphere. Now of course if we press play now nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to come up to X particles and add in an emitter. And the emitter under the object tab, we're going to set that to be object and we're going to just drag this plane into that field. We want to emit from the points of our object and if we just check this ob this option here one particle per source element so then it's going to create one particle for each vertex if we switch to the emission tab let's set the speed to be zero and the emission mode I'm going to set that to be shot so we only emit particles on that very first frame so now if we rewind just press play and you can see we have particles and if I just hide that plane you can see that we have indeed got particles for every vertex. Let's just switch to the display tab and rather than dots let's just choose circle field come back to our emitter and we want to choose emission let's set the radius to say 2.5 so they're just a little bit easier to see there we go. Okay so the next thing that I want to do is to choose X particles come down to my modifiers and I'm going to add in some gravity now when we press play you can see of course all of our particles drop according to the, uh, the gravity. Now I'd like to have some interaction with those particles and this sphere so if we right click on that sphere and choose X particles and add in an XP collider now when we press play those particles are going to drop down and they're going to bounce off of that surface. Now the key to this is using constraints so if we come down to the dynamics objects let's add XP constraints and if we just under the connections tab enable connect at birth what that's going to do is it's going to create a whole bunch of virtual springs between all of those particles um, based on the parameters that we have here and it's going to try and hold them together so if we now rewind and press play you should notice some difference and there we go and you can see that it kind of stays together but it just tears very very easily now the reason that it tears very easily is because things like constraints require a, a lot of accuracy and at the moment the defaults are set very low so the accuracy is pretty low but if we press command or control D to bring up our project settings switch to the X particles tab all we need to really do here is increase the number of sub steps and the number of iterations and it will make our simulation much more accurate so if we set our sub steps to be 5 and if we set our iterations to be around 10 now let's rewind and have a look and there we go and you can see that we're getting a kind of cloth sort of effect. Now of course it's only working on our particles at the moment. So what we need to do is if we unhide this plane object, what we can do is we can add a deformer to this plane and we can link that deformer to the particles. So if we select that plane, hold down the shift, come down and choose other objects and then add in the XP deformer. So the XP deformer then needs an input which is our emitter and we drag our emitter into here. Now if we hide this emitter so we don't see those particles and let's just press play and see what happens and you can see that now we're kind of getting a cloth result. If we take that plane and let's smooth that just by dropping it into some subdivision surface and now it looks a lot nicer. And there you go and it's as simple as that. Now one thing that is worth pointing out if we just switch off that SDS and unhide our particles is that if we switch to a side view and just nudge through now you can't really see that actually but you can see it in the perspective view that there is a one frame lag and this is just a problem with priorities in cinema that curses us always but it's easy to rectify we can just come up choose X particles other object add in an XP cache object and now if we build that cache what will happen once that's built is we won't get that one frame lag Okay, so I've let that cache. Now we can switch on our SDS and we'll leave the particles visible and you can see that now everything is in sync. So if we just hide that to have a look at the result. Boom. Simple cloth using X particles. Okay, let's just select this cache object and I'm just going to empty the cache. 
Let's take this one step further and imagine that you wanted to uh, fix some of the points on this plane so they didn't move. Now there's a few ways to do that, but probably the easiest way is if we just come up to our X particles menu, choose modifiers, control, and we add in the XP freeze modifier. If we unhide our emitter, let's just switch the plane off. Oh, we need to see the plane for the particles to be emitted, but you can see that now we've got that in there, nothing's happening. It's basically uh, the particles aren't moving. If we then take this XP freeze, switch to the fall off, let's set that to be cylindrical. And I'm going to set that to be along Z. Let's just make it a lot smaller. In fact, we can do it here, say 15 by 15 by 200. I'm going to set the fall off to be zero. And now if we drag this up to our plane and we pull it across over here, so it's only the particles that are emitted within this fall off that will be affected. So it's only those that will freeze. So now if we Let's switch on our deformer and let's just press play. And there you go. And you can see that now we're kind of creating a curtain or it could be a flag. It could be any number of things. And once again, it's working pretty well. So that's how you could constrain your particles. Another way might be to put them into a different group. Um, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Let's juggle this scene around a little bit. I'm going to grab this XP deformer and drop that into the sphere. Let's just switch that off and just take this collision tag and put that onto the plane. So now we're going to have the plane, which is going to be our collider object. I'm going to pull that down, make it a bit longer, and let's just make this into a little hill. And if we grab this sphere and pull this up, something like so. Now you can see that at the moment the sphere, the distribution of the points isn't very even. They're going to clump at the poles and the, the equator there a lot wider. But we can change the type to icosahedron and that means that the distribution of the vertices is much more even. We don't need this XP freeze anymore. And if we come to our emitter and under the object tab, instead of the plane, let's just grab that sphere and drop that in there. Let's hide the sphere so we can just see the particles for now and let's just press play and see what happens. And there we go, and you can see it falls down, and then it kind of ends up as a bit of a mess at the bottom. So what we need to do here is we need to come maybe to our constraints. Maybe increase the, st the stiffness a bit. The other thing that we should do is increase the connection limit. It's currently set to 8, which means that any one particle can only connect its constraints to 8 other particles. Uh, if we had all particles connecting to all particles and you've got hundreds or thousands of particles, then it's going to become very slow and the chances are the simulation um, will kind of just fail. If we set this fairly high, maybe to say 96, and let's just rewind and see what happens. Okay, and you can see there isn't much difference. So what we probably want to do is come back to our project settings and we need to increase our subframe steps and our iterations. Now the real trick here is finding the balance between the number of subframe steps, the iterations and the accuracy um, with the amount of time that it takes to calculate the simulation. You want to get that simulation calculating as fast as possible, but of course you want it accurate as well. So every scene is unique and you need to juggle these values. I'm going to just try subframe steps of 50. I'm going to set my iterations to 25. And I'm going to set my accuracy to 25. So this is going to slow things down considerably, but hopefully we'll see a better simulation. And you can still see it play back in the viewport fairly well. And there we go. And you can see now that we're getting a kind of nice sort of soft body it's almost a little bit too rigid so maybe we come to the constraints and reduce the stiffness slightly and maybe increase these um, but the other thing that i could do here is come to the plane the collider tag let's set the bounce here to be zero and let's set the friction to be say 100 and maybe now we'll see it drop and hopefully it will roll so let's just there we go and you can see that's working pretty well and of course, we can now unhide our sphere and we can show our deformer and let's hide this emitter. And just to speed up playback, I'm just going to cache this result. And of course, if you're rendering X particles over a network or anything at all, then you need to make sure that you do build the cache so that you don't get spurious results depending on the processor involved. And you can see it's churning through this. There's a couple of dents in there. You know, it's not the perfect soft body solution, but um, it certainly is a great solution if you don't have the studio version of cinema. And there we go. Now we can press play and see this playing back. And that's looking pretty rad. Here's the final example that I just wanted to show you. And um, here we're using a logo, the Lux logo. And you can see that the distribution of points, although it is distributed over the object fairly evenly, 
um, you'll notice that around the edges of the object it's quite a lot denser than it is in the middles and this is just so that it can be um, subdivided with a subdivision surface um, but that nice distribution of edges will mean that it will deform very well uh, so what we've got here is we've got an emitter just as before let's just hide this for a moment and switch off that deformer and you can see if we just jump forward one frame that there we have all of the particles on those vertices so you can see that there are some pretty big gaps between them and then what I've done is I've added in gravity just as before and we've got constraints and I've reduced the stiffness down to about 65 with a connection limit of 96 if we come to the project settings X part, as you can see that we've got subframe steps at 25 with five iterations and accuracy of 10 so it's fairly low settings so it should calculate reasonably quickly um, I've also then just set up a few cylinders and a plane so that we can create some kind of comedy animation if we press play now you should be able to see those particles doing their stuff you see it's a little bit slow because there are quite a few particles involved so let's just rewind instead and enable this cache object I'm going to enable the deformer and unhide the geometry and let's hide this emitter I'm just going to cache this and we can have a look at the result from there the particles are now baked if we press play we can see our simulation obviously I haven't spent much time on this but it's uh, pretty funny um, hopefully that gives you some idea of the potential of working with the constraints one of the great things as well about working with the cache is if we come down to the playback here we have scale and that's for scaling time so if we wanted to we could say maybe set that at like 40 so we've got like a 40 percent speed and if we watch this now it's going to be a lot more graceful and it's a really nice way of slowing down your simulations so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and if you don't have X particles 3 by now then what's stopping you? Um, it's the most powerful particle system for Cinema 4D without a doubt. And if you're interested in adding that to your toolkit, please head on over to hellolux.com and I think you'll find that we have X particles 3 at one of the most attractive prices you'll find anywhere. So that's it for me, Tim Clapham. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you around.